I've always been very interested in helping young artists get performance opportunities in New York City. It's so difficult to find a space, a venue, um, like this beautiful church where we just are. And it's uh, expensive and there are a million things going on at once. And so to get a pl place for singers to just show their abilities and test their abilities and try out new roles in opera, um, that's sort of what I love. Desdemona is such a wonderful character and she in this one scene encapsulates joy of childhood of her mo remembering her mother as well as sorrow a sorrowful story that she was told and then her impending doom and knowing that it's coming but even so bravely going toward it and because it's be at the hands of the man that she loves the most and she's willing to go ahead and put her life out there for him. And I fell in love with opera when I was 12 years old on a class field trip to the opera and came home and told my mom I wanted to be an opera singer and I told her every single day for two years until she finally put me in voice lessons. And then my first voice teacher told me I never actually could be a singer because my jaw was too big. Well, I certainly wish I had studied conducting, which I never have, <laughs> so it's all uh, self-taught and I have conducted orchestras with opera in opera and um, maybe half a dozen times and this was tonight was just a piano accompaniment with the singers and um, it allows me to be surrounded by the music and do it exactly like I want to hear it and use the exact singers or voice types uh, um, plush, beautiful soprano sound or a, or a deep, rich mezzo sound, and I get to choose who's doing it, and then I get to lead them in how it goes so that it's just my little perfect uh, experience, dream. I love to conduct. Um, I'm not a professional, but happy to do it. complicated story. I have met my twin, who I don't really know is my twin, um, and I fall in love with him. It's um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad relationship right now, and I meet this person, and I sort of come alive, and it's a really interesting and deep and strange story. <laughs>
grown into what I feel to be uh, high-level artistry, my mind is on character, 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 and how I want to portray whatever character I'm lucky enough to sing. So how do I get across the deep emotions that Zaglinda is feeling at this very moment? it in me I'm not I'm not going to step foot out there it's not honoring the music and the character and the storytelling so you you want to sort of work it into you so much that you just trust that that muscle memory will be there for you I've always wanted to bring together veteran singers of great uh, notoriety which I've always done I've brought in famous singers and had them work with the new young artists who are in their 20s and 30s. So I've had, I brought Eleanor Stieber together with young people. I brought Chester Ludgen in to work with young people. Out the garret window and down the slanting roofs We made our escape They shot at us from the street Marcus was hit He fell Enrico Di Giuseppe sang with me A lot of people like that And and what I would do is I'd give one role I'd give one role to two people. So Enrico Di Giuseppe was um, Don Jose and Carmen, and I also gave that to a 25-year-old tenor. So they shared the role and shared their um, common. Uh, the young person gave energy to, to the older man, and the older man gave the wisdom of experience. As a young boy, I had a very curious mind and a musical ear, and I loved to sing. Uh, so I started the viola when I was in maybe the fifth grade, and um, graduated to piano when I was in the eighth grade, which is quite late for most people who want to consider piano as a career path. But I had wonderful teachers and family who really encouraged me, and it took off like, like wildfire, so I practiced constantly and couldn't listen enough. I think that would be my biggest thing that I would say is that listening to great artists and great conductors um, throughout the recorded age is such a special thing that we have at our, at our disposal now. <laughs> special about this evening is being able to um, uh, showcase different repertoires sort of in a very fast-paced way um, going from Rossini to maybe Mozart to Wagner to Verdi back to back um, I think is exciting for an audience it also requires you know a lot of variety but the skill set required for that is uh, I think just being able and flexible to you know mold to each composer's style and of course to what each singer brings to that special moment in the character <laughs>
college, um, the University of North Texas, to study vocal performance, and I've been performing ever since. Probably, I think, the biggest potholes for young singers are not taking advantage of every opportunity they see before them. Mainly using the resources around them, being too shy to ask somebody, would you listen to me? Would you work with me? Because that helps every, every step of that helps. Probably the most challenging things are the Verdi that I do. The Verdi Requiem is now one of my very favorite pieces to do, but when I was getting my hands in it, it was much more difficult because it does everything. It, it explores everything you can do vocally. And because of that, it makes it very, very difficult. You have to be very prepared with your technique. As a collaborative pianist, especially one who works a lot of the operatic repertoire, there has to be sort of a conductor inside of you, <laughs> whether or not I ever want to approach the podium. Um, but, you know, for example, tonight when we didn't have a conductor for many of the operatic scenes, that's sort of my role and sort of the skill set that's required, I think. Uh -huh. 